In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to create a PayPal button so that you can embed the PayPal button onto your website and then you can start accepting online payments from your clients and customers. So naturally, you're going to want to sign into PayPal and if you haven't got the PayPal um, account yet, you're going to have to go through the whole sign up process. Otherwise, if you have got one, just simply log in. I'll log in with our Caffeinate account. So once you've logged in, what you're going to see is that you've got this pay and get paid option. And then when you click on there, you've got accept payments and then you've got PayPal buttons. So you're going to click PayPal buttons. And then you can see that you've got various options here. So depending on what it is you're selling, if you're sending a month to month recurring payment, you would create a subscribe button. If you are creating a, a digital product or even a physical product and you want to take payment online, you would create the buy now button. Or if you've got an online shop, then um, this is more for the e-commerce kinds of business models, then you can add a at cart button if you want to accept donations maybe you have a cause or something like that then you create a donate button and then as you can see they've recently introduced smart buttons and smart subscribe i'm going to go ahead and just create the old-fashioned standard uh, buy now button for instance uh, and then the same principles would apply with following the process for all of these so click on buy now And then you are sent to this page. So here you get to choose the type of button. So obviously this is the same process you're going to see depending on which of the buttons you chose, whether it's a shopping cart, a donation or a subscription. I'm doing the buy now, so I'm keeping it at buy now. Then you're going to give it a name. So you might say online <clears throat> consultation or whatever it is that you are going to um, call it. Uh, if you want to give an item ID, if you've got different types of consultations, maybe you want to have consultation A, consultation B, and consultation C for your own reference. And then we're going to set the price, so whatever you want the price to be, and then you've got the currency. Now, one thing you must know about PayPal is that it doesn't have all the world's currencies available. So um, in all likelihood, you're going to use USD, Euros or the British pounds. And then you've got the options here to add um, customizations to your button if you wanted to. So you can see that you if you've got variations, so like a 30 minute consultation is this much, a, tw a one hour consultation is you know slightly more and then a 90 minute consultation is slightly more. So you are able to do that and then you can see which of the options, um, what, the, what the customer will be able to choose and see when, when you create these customizations. Um, you can then also have a drop down menu. So if you have different, um, like they, if you're doing a product, then you're gonna have your different sizes. And again, the same, um, principles apply so maybe this is a different type of consultation so you might have a uh, strategy consultation and then you've got a um, coaching call and then you've got a um, I don't know audit call something like that so these are variations based on um, traits as opposed to pricing Okay, and then you've got a uh, text field. So if you wanted to add a text field and then you would see what that looks like, then you would put in a text field. I never do any of these. Um, I'll be honest, I just keep it standard. And then also you've got the option for customizing the text or appearance. So if you want to change it to pay now instead of buy now, if it's a service, then that makes sense to do, do that. If you wanted to add your own button image instead of having the PayPal yellow um, button, then you would need to have a URL of where your graphic, your button graphic is, is um, hosted. I'm just going to keep it on the PayPal button. 
Um, and yeah, you can choose whether you want to have the credit card logos displayed or not. So completely up to you. Okay, so we'll keep it there again. I don't generally customize it. I just keep them all the same. And then shipping, if it is a physical product and you've got a standard shipping amount, then you're going to put in your shipping cost there. If you are charging tax, you can put in your tax rate if you're VAT registered. Um, and then here is where you're going to tell uh, when you embed the link into your website, this is how PayPal knows that this is related to your PayPal account. So you can either use your merchant ID or you can use your email address. Either one is fine. There's, there's, as far as I know, there's no, not one that is better than the other. Then step number two is that you want to save your button for PayPal. I would definitely keep this checked. I find it very useful, not only um, if I've got something on the button I need to edit, maybe you increase your prices or you're having a sale and you're going to decrease your price, then you can go back to all of your stored buttons. But I also like this, having my historical buttons there because then I can easily duplicate if I need to create a new button. Um, so definitely you want to save your PayPal buttons. Um, if you've got stock and you want to track your inventory, then you can do so by telling PayPal how much of that item you have um, and also whether your customers can buy when your items are sold out. Uh, and if you want to track your profit and loss, if you want to make the difference between them two. Um, I'm a service-based business, so none of that is, is ever relevant to me. So I never tick it, but it is there if you are a product-based business. And then finally, step number three is your checkout pages. And so this is very important uh, because once somebody has gone through the process, they've paid on PayPal for the item. And then what happens next? This is what, what you're instructing PayPal here. So do you want to let your customer change order quantities? That's completely up to you. Um, I always keep it on no, uh, but you must choose what is best for you. Can your customers add special instructions in a message to you? You know, maybe you're selling food and they need to know or you, they want you to know that they're vegan. And then so then you would have options there. Or maybe it's around the delivery that, you know, we've got a big dog and so leave the package at the gate or something, you know. Um, I generally don't because all of my um, services are digital in nature. Um, and then do you need your customer's shipping address? If you've, got a, uh, if you've got a product business, then obviously you would need that. If you're an online business and it, everything happens online, then you don't need that. So you would just click no. And then here, take your customers to this URL when they cancel their checkout. So you definitely want to put this in here. And as you can see, I've used this many, many times. So you need to create a website. I mean, you need to pay, create a page on your website, as it says, and um, and put your own wording on there saying that you have canceled your payment. And maybe they've run into issues. If you're having tech issues, contact us at X, Y and Z. Um, so you would create a page on your website and then you would add that page to this uh, cancel checkout section and then take customers to this URL when they finish their checkout. So if this is very important, if you are selling a digital product or you are selling a um, service and there's a next step, maybe they need to book their spot on your calendar, then this is the page. Again, you would need to create a page on your website and you would put that URL into this space so that it confirms that the payment has gone through and it provides additional instructions for the next step, whatever that is for you in your business. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a very important part of the process. So you would go ahead and create that page and then pop that URL in there. And then lastly, if you wanted to have um, advanced variables, if you're going to get into the HTML code of what your uh, button looks like, this is where you would drop that HTML code in here. Um, I never use it, so don't fret about it if you're not a, um, if you're not, yeah, a techie and you don't deal with HTML code, then don't worry about it. And then all you need to do is click, click create button and then PayPal will create that button. 
And then what you'll see once you've created it is that you get two choices of code. This is the code that you would embed on your onto your website. So wherever the person is going to be um, seeing the offer that you're making and where they where they can pay, this is the code that puts this button onto your website. And then your email code, if you're um, just sending a link and you're going to, for instance, um, say, you know, click here to go and make payment, then this is the link that you would send to somebody to make their PayPal payment. And then you'll see that you've got um, button, buttons beneath here, options beneath here, that you can create a similar button, which I really like, so that you don't have to go through the whole process again and again. You can just then change the minor details that uh, different products or services require, or you can create and start brand new with a new button. And then finally, you can go to my saved buttons, and then that is where you will see all of the buttons that you've saved. So these are the buttons I've created in the past, and you can see that you've got the button, the option to edit the button. You can view the code so that if you need to copy it and put it somewhere else, you, you know where to get it. You can create a similar button, delete it, or create a new button. And then when you log in again to um, PayPal, and you're looking for your saved buttons, you go back there and then you'll see that you've got this view your saved buttons in the top right hand corner. So that's it. That's how quick and easy it is to create a PayPal button. Um, you just go through all that process and then at the end, copy the code and place that code wherever you need it to be on your website uh, within your HTML text. So actually, let me show you how how you need to do that. This is how you would do it on the um, on uh, WordPress. So let's view code here. Okay, so we've got that, and I'm gonna copy that. So Command C, and then we're gonna go to let's see. Here's a blog post that I was busy working on. I'm just gonna show you as a as an example, so here on WordPress, we would go to the text um, editor. So instead of the visual editor of a blog post or of a page, we go to the text editor and then we drop that code in there and you can see then we've got the buy now button underneath. So that's how simple it is. If you're not on um, WordPress, your website platform would have the same functionality where you can choose between the the straightforward um, aspect of your page or the, the HTML code aspect of your page. And if you've got a web developer, all you need to do is then send them the PayPal code. So that's how easy it is. Happy buttoning.